Today, on this most auspicious day, 12, 12, 12, we have the honor of visiting with Amita D. one more time to hear today about your painting. And I'd be most grateful if you could begin with a poem. Which one should I start with? Mm. Something from Sri Aurobindo? Yes. I should take this one. Yeah. Yeah. At the head she stands of birth and toil and fate. In their slow round, the cycles turn to her core. Alone her hands can change time's dragon base. Hers is the mystery the night conceives. The spirit's alchemy is hers. She is the golden bridge, the wonderful fire. The luminous heart of the unknown is she, a power of silence in the depths of God. She is the force, the inevitable world, the magnet of our difficult ascent, the sun from which we kindle all our suns, the light that leans from the unrealized vasts, the joy that beckons from the impossible, the might of all that never yet came down. All nature dumbly calls to her alone to heal with her feet the aching throb of life and break the shields on the dim soul of man and kindle her fire in the closed heart of things. All here shall be one day her sweetness's home. All contraries prepare her harmony. Towards her our knowledge climbs, our passion gropes. In her miraculous rapture we shall dwell. Her clasp <coughs> will, shall turn to ecstasy our pain. Her clasp shall turn to ecstasy our pain. Our self shall be one self with all through her. In her confirmed because transformed in her. Our life shall find its fulfilled response above the boundless hushed beatitudes, below the wonder of the embrace divine. You had told us briefly in another session how you began using pencil and then pastel. Now we would like to hear about your more mature years of painting. I was really fond of painting, of drawing when I was young. I showed you the line I had done before the school opened here. The school was inaugurated on the 2nd of December 1943. So I was 10 years old and straight away mother arranged for us a drawing class because 
drawing is very important and it had to be included in the syllabus. In fact, Sri Aurobindo has spoken of it that way, not to make of our students painters or, or artists, but simply to give them the uh, precision of observation and hand-to-eye coordination. So we were very lucky to have Krishnalalji for our teacher. So he first gave us a, a notion of perspective. He used to bring blocks of wood painted in white which we had to first it was a cube then it was a cylinder uh, we had to first draw it correctly and then shade it so we had to learn shading once we had learned enough shading he brought us something that i have kept here Where did I keep it? I thought I'd kept it here. He had made us do um, a bowl, simply a bowl. After we finished the bowl, he made us, I think I've kept it here. I should have kept it apart. I knew I had kept it aside, but it is not here. How strange! He gave us uh, he gave us a bowl to draw. Once we had finished drawing it, he wanted us to do it with a pencil. He put a pencil in. And then he asked us to draw a sketchbook he put behind. And all together, we learned the shading from him that way. And after that, I went on doing certain things on my own. Here is something I had done on my own, um, because I liked it very much. Leonardo da Vinci's, I'll take it out, it will shine less in the plastic, it shines too much. I've done it as a child, as a very young girl, just out of my own interest. That is, Head of Christ done by Leonardo da Vinci. I had copied it. Uh, it was not schoolwork, it was just because I was interested in drawing. <laughs> it is really strange, you can't find it when you look for it. I've got all sorts of things except that. Rather strange for me. And my childhood at Myanmar, I had talked about last time. So this you is. Can't remove it. You can just turn and show it. Okay. Huh? He didn't take out. No. That's all right. It doesn't matter. Last time I talked to you about the Shwedagon Pagoda in Myanmar, in Burma. I had drawn it from memory. Hmm. <laughs> golden. The golden pagoda. Pagoda, yes. In Rangoon. Now you have written something here, very, very interesting. <laughs> I still remember how I had enjoyed doing this on my own. Much later I understood that was total absorption. Uh, Sri Aurobindo speaks in his system of national education that the first thing we have to teach the child is concentration. And uh, that beyond the concentration there's total absorption. So that means the whole body and the whole mind and the eye and everything is totally taken up by the work you are doing. And I found that in drawing. 
and later on it became my motto um, to really become uh, yes it was a line from Savitri in silence seek God's meaning in thy depths so that became my motto for my paintings because always everything in me felt totally silent whenever I painted or I drew. Were you aware of the outside world or did you close it out? When I was painting, completely lost. I was, I remember my experience with the flower. I used to often give paintings of flowers to the mother, offer them. And um, once I wanted to offer all white flowers. And uh, there was a lily on my table and um, I was drawing it. I said, how to show that the petals come out from the center and and you won't believe it, as I asked myself that question, and I looked at the flower, nothing existed but the flower. And uh, that is how my childhood love of flowers got translated into something that was physically alive for me in my own self. And, um, I had kept a few other paintings also um, where I had a I had dream I had a dream of um, hibiscus which we had here a double hibiscus and one day I had a dream I was sleeping in that room but my body but I came out here and I looked at the hibiscus and one beautiful white sarid girl came out, sort of, and with a red border and danced around the plant and looked at me once with a lot of pleasure and a smile. Two days later, or within that week, that plant died. So I thought it was the spirit of the plant and the flower which had come out to say I'm going. And uh, I had drawn it and I kept it, kept also a print out. I had done quite a few and the printouts were taken. This is a very special flower for me, um, Joy of Integral Peace. It was named, it had first blo bloomed here and um, It had first bloomed in our house and there was no significance at that time. Mm. I, we had about eight or ten stem bunches. I took them all to the ashram and mother at that time named it mm. Joy of Faithfulness. And afterwards she said that the one without the Lines. This is the printout of that painting where the flower around the plant. And this is where the being came out. And yes, that's how. Because I saw her turning like that, I have painted her thrice.
I painted her thrice because yes. she is going around the plant. This is another one very special for me. I was asking myself the question, we all know that Mother's and Shurabindu's love is divine love and it is pervading the whole world. We all loved Mother's prayer of 10th September 1914, which she had made us, made our students recite. Ton amour est comme une marée montante, envahissant tout l'être et déferlant sur toute chose. Thy love is like a, a flood that rises within the being and spreads over the world, déferlant sur toute chose. So I had wondered, how is it? And then this painting like came through my hand without my volition of the divine slum and this is as if the cave of the of humanity so that about about uh, paintings. I think I should speak about the drawing class uh, taken yes. by Krishna Lal. It was very interesting. After we had done the the main uh, learnt sketching, he asked us to draw flowers, mm -hmm. and uh, he gave us. Um, a few flowers. The flowers he kept on my desk were three. And then he gave some other flowers to some other child. So I looked at him and said, when you entered the classroom, you had no flowers in your hand. Where did they come from? And uh, then I said, why is she given, why has she another flower as a child like that? So he said, it's none of your business, you do your own. So. I looked at the flowers and then itself I understood he was giving to each one whatever would become the motto of the life, the guidance for our life. So my flowers were skill in work, flocks, divine presence and transformation. These three were the flowers given me. <laughs> So, you have those sketches? I have, I don't have my earlier sketches. I have done these in memory of that time and I put them in a drawing you would like to see. I thought I'd get it here. Mm -hmm. I've got quite a few uh, pages. Yeah, and I'm interested but in those. some of these because I just mm -hmm. saw one where you said that. Uh, so you have a huge number of See, now this is huh? much paintings. Long. Painted. This is much larger than the one we saw the other day. Yes, that was a photograph. This is this the is original the, size. Oh, I'd like the to original take, size I, I like gave to, to mother and I kept, kept a copy. Okay, so maybe we can photograph that. I'll pull it out uh, because it has got some marks here. Then I saw another one. Which you would have done. Uh, divided, let's see. Hey, you're quick. <laughs> because this was a dream. Yes. Both of these were dreams. Ah.
1952. Can you tell us about this dream? Yes, in that dream, I saw exactly like this, and I knew that that closed door had to be opened. Please ask him to go. This is another dream, much later. This was in 1950, 1977, I think. I saw a group of people, mostly of the ashram, perhaps, in a in a dark area, hmm. and I was going up towards the light. So I called it stepping out into the open. So this was a dream, and... Um, Did you give titles to many of your poems, uh, to your paintings? Uh, a few. A few. A few. Um, there is another uh, dream which is there in the smaller notebook, I think, which was very precious to me. This was also a dream. Mm. I had called it the torch bearer. Can you please read up what you have Yes, what have, you, what have you written about it? Have you written any comments on the painting? Can yes, I think I have. The torch bearer was going ahead on the beach, leaving large luminous footprints on the sand. The sea was impressive with long lines of foam on the crest of its waves. Um, this has got a little spoiled because it's a long ago picture. There was one particular one, this one. Mm. These two are also dreams. This can come out by itself. This dream was a dream of a pond. I just saw, as in a picture, half the canvas in light, with light pouring down on a pond full of nanifars. The other side was slushy, dark, in dark colors, yet to be lighted up. On waking, I kept saying, right side lighted, left is still to be done. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Love the blue, it's beautiful blue. This, this one is oil pastels. Oil pastels. This one is also a dream. I came out of a tower in a stream of light that was pouring down on one side. The other side to my right where in as if in red sand, areas in red sand, going down by steps, each about a foot high. The top of the of two trees were lighted up. I knew I had to go down that way into the dark abyss. I called it praying for the light. And this is how you drew yourself. And myself coming out. Yes. Because at that time also, for and much later too, when I was called outside body, my physical body would be asleep and part of my body would go out and I knew it was in a white gown. Ah. In a gown. Had you mentioned it to mother? Um, no, mother had seen me, I think. Uh, like that in a 
in her dream. And about Krishna Lal, you were going to tell us a little yes. more about his class. Yes. And uh, I asked him uh, why uh, different flowers for the different uh, students. We were 9, 10, or 10 or 11 years old. And um, he told us, he told me, you do your work, none of your business. And the other person he had given, uh, whole bunch of mental simplicity and to somebody else he had given hollyhock offering you know something like that to each one he had given a separate do you remember those person's names no how long did you study with him we did uh, two years with him i think Oh, one more year, and um, after that we didn't have any drawing class. Soon after that, mother asked me to teach drawing to children, the one I spoke to you about. I think I can... Did you study with Sanjeev Banda? Huh? Sanjeev Banda? Sanjeev Banda. Banda noticed it was before the school started. It was in 1942 that I had done with him. Mm. I thought I had kept the... And he had noticed that I was very careful and I drew... Here is the printout of those mm -hmm. two. I, I drew very carefully all the flowers this is one he had asked me to copy from a picture, a lily. Sanjee this Manda. one is half finished. Sanjeev Banda. This is before the school started. Did you ever paint Mother or Sri Aurobindo? No. No. Once, without wanting, I had done a figure. I had done Leonardo da Vinci as a child. Leonardo da Vinci self-portrait I had copied from a, from a book. And that was the first portrait I had done. There is one I did... And you were 10 years old <laughs> when you did this. All this I did just for my own personal interest. Mother had seen my paintings in the sense that I had offered to the mother a few paintings. And... Um, so where have those paintings gone? They have gone to art gallery? <laughs> no, I didn't keep a copy. The one or two I kept a copy of, I have shown you, I think. So where, uh, where did the paintings go? Did they I, go to I, I offered to mother. So I don't know. So Some of them I think she kept. I don't know where they have. This one I was speaking of, without my wanting to, I was reading some lines and uh, after I painted this, I found it resembled Shurabindo's earlier portrait to a certain extent. In the eye and the, yes, and the shape yes, of the head. Yes, the shape of the head. Yes, Actually, I, see it. I was reading a um, few lines where the veils of vision piercing the veils of ignorance to see the truth. Knowledge piercing the veils of ignorance as for Ashwapati in Savitri. So at that time when I was painting, Mother had seen me doing this one. So she had asked me if I wanted to show nature also as a veil. I said yes. So she said then you must put green. So I put this extra green. Uh -huh. 
the different waves of nature were pierced and the real knowledge. This one also was a dream and after I had drawn it, I was told, look into the book and you would see there's a line in Savitri that corresponds to this one. I didn't do it after reading the line. Fire on a bare rock. I put it in later perhaps. Did you do paintings in oil? No, I had never done. Shanjibanda tried to tempt me, saying someone who has done pastel, it is easy to go into oils. Mm -hmm. But I never found time to join his class. He was holding the classes in the school at that time for Gokul, Mahesh, and... Um, and somebody else. Preeti also was there. No, Preeti was not there. Cheta was there. And uh, one more person, I think Devashish mm. Patnaik, I think he was also there because he had come around once to do portraits in pencil of all, all the teachers. How long have you painted? From what age until now, perhaps? Uh, now painting? very little, now very little, mm, but uh, whenever I had time I used to paint and um, one year I had given, um, as I told you, I had done for the class, sunflowers, mm -hmm. and uh, mother had asked Pavitra that. We had done it for Pavitrada's birthday. Mm. How many flowers did she have in her hand, I told you. Yes. And he thought that there were, I had two, and mother said no, there were, she had three. This is the one I kept her copy. to say about flies. Oh, what yes, about when you started teaching art uh, uh, and your students? One more story of a flower, I think I should say, of the artistic sense. Where did I think that? Mm -hmm. I had dreamt of that flower at every, as if established in the body, and uh, the last center was also. I think we photographed that flower. Does it yeah. have the blue line, the, yes, the dark the, lines? And I said, the blue. I yes. said, Mother had asked me to keep it yeah. as I had seen. That's right. You were asking me about uh, your teaching and your students for in art. art. Um, I didn't teach much. Those first two years, mother had asked me to take up uh, drawing for children. But afterwards, when um, we were in charge of the higher secondary classes, uh, age group 12, 13 to age group 15 or so, 16, Tanmay and I found we were in charge of the class, highest class. We said, children in our school have a drawing class, but not the higher secondary classes as they come up. So we said we have to keep an opportunity for those who want, keep an option. Those who want, they should be able to go into paint. So that's how what we called the art room was started. And um, any one of the higher secondary class students who wanted to do 
some painting would come and Sanjibanda was the one who was ready to come thrice a week or twice a week and they used to come to him for drawing and painting. He took up watercolors and for some he took up oils afterwards. Uh, Usha Rauji Bhai also used the art room but for younger children. Usha, you know, she, she painted very, very freely and beautifully. She was asked by the other class teachers to take up some painting. So she took up some painting and Dhanavanti. Dhanavanti also used what we call the art room. I used it not for teaching painting, but a few students of the high course wanted to do art appreciation. So I took them up. I said, I have never studied it like that. They said, no, you will be able to do. Uh, so we had a pact. I said, you will, I will introduce the painting and you will speak the next week on the time and place wherever the the painting was done by. So we started what was called art appreciation class without my knowing much about it. But I followed uh, a set of books and um, the very first class I asked them three questions. First, um, is it enough to say on looking at a picture I like this picture, or I don't like this one so much. You have to be able to say what, what you liked, what touched you. So that was one question. The other question I asked was, what are the different types of paintings you have seen? So portraits, sceneries, and uh, still life or symbolic symbolic paintings we were seeing here constantly. So that was the other sign. And the third question was, who painted it? So then we come into the question of where and at what time of the which century. So that's how I had started the class. And we took up the Primitive and Western art first. The second year we took up Indian art, mm. architecture and sculptures, especially sculpture and painting. And uh, we used uh, Shurabindu's book, Foundations of Indian Culture or Significance of Indian Art, which he was. And, um, then we took up the last year, third year course was uh, Far Eastern Art, Chinese and Japanese. Mm. Mm. So I used to bring a, a reproduction and uh, each student, I think there were five students, we used to sit on the floor and I placed the reproduction, they would see it carefully and each one would comment on it. And only after that I would complete the, the, the reviewing of the picture. And then we spoke about the artist. That's how we proceeded. So we did, um, in Western art, we followed uh, quite a bit the set of books called Metropolitan Art by Kennedy. Somebody who had taken up art classes for older women, I think, in uh, Canada or in the States, I'm not very sure. And these were printed and available in Honesty Book House. Mm. And uh, I think Krishnalalji also had quite a few copies. So I based on that, I did, I took up the Western and primitive art. How far did you go into the modern artists? 
More such as Salvatore Dali, Kandinsky. Yes. Oh, it was a very interesting class when we went into modern art. Mm, uh, they said, on looking at a Picasso, they said, how can it be a studio? So I explained to them how uh, Cezanne, I think, first introduced uh, landscape in form of cubism, you know, and how cubism started, where you concentrated on the outlines and to suggest the three-dimensional form, and where the grouping, the placing of the main subject was very important, and uh, the grouping of the different elements on the picture made its composition balanced or not so well balanced. Now, after that, we looked at some paintings. I think I should show you. I have got the books that I had followed, or have I given them away? Mm. And for modern art, we looked at some designs, and I asked them to look at the raw iron design on the parapet of the school. And uh, that was really a, a visual memory test. And they had to come back into the classroom and do from memory the design that they saw. And it was rather difficult. Then, um, so the development of the, of the sight perception of the different uh, elements in a painting I had to first make it make it clear to the students that you just didn't only look at a picture for Picasso the studio is the one we discussed and it has a doorway and it has got a few brushes and it has got the suggestion of the corner of a room. And, uh, you know, it is all suggestive straight lines and colors. So <clears throat> I explained to them that uh, uh, modern art, very, very often I explained also modern poetry that way, and modern art did not want to give you the whole physical uh, form reproduced on, but all the artists had to go through a rigorous training of drawing and proper painting. Only after that they could go in for their own abstraction. That is how each artist's abstract expression is different from the other artists. And uh, about Salvador Dali, we had very amusing classes. You know, his yellow violin and things like that. He has got paintings like that, all as if half done. And uh, I wouldn't have been able to uh, explain it it is the art critic himself who has explained that Salvador Dali was trying to put on in painting what he had enjoyed in the music. So he has drawn the violin half and it's all yellow because of the brightness of the music or whatever he heard. So yellow violins all half done, not fully done and all. So, but we all used to laugh at uh, those, many of those. Uh, before we close, uh, I have so many more questions still about Chagall and other modern artists, but uh, could you read us something in closing today? Yes, yeah, sure. And then we can, do, we can continue on our, sure. in our next session. I 
I should, I, you want me to take this one? Fine. This is from Savitri, no? Yes. This is. As when the mantra sinks in yoga's ear, its message enters, stirring the blind brain, and peeps in the dim ignorant cells its sound. The hearer understands a form of words, and musing on the index thought it holds, he strives to read it with a laboring mind, but finds bright hints, not the embodied truth. Then, falling silent in himself, to know he meets the deeper listening of his soul. The word repeats itself in rhythmic strains, thought, vision, feeling, sense. The body's self are seized unutterably, and he endures an ecstasy and an immortal change. He feels a wideness and becomes a power. All knowledge rushes on him like a sea. Transmuted by the white spiritual ray, he walks in naked heavens of joy and calm sees the God face and hears transcendent speech.